Well, guys, welcome to the Sketchy Squares podcast, episode five, five, right? I can't count that high. Oh, shit. Shit, Damn. you're asking the wrong person, man. I'm a drummer. I only count to four. Ooh. Well, is this higher than you can count? Because I'm going to go with five. All right, guys. We're, uh, we're episode back five. Online. Oh, we're shit. Back Damn. Oh, good old repetition. So, uh, as you guys know, if you're even listening, whatever. This is Sora. And I'm Eddie, I guess. Woo. And Jeremy. Woo! Awesome. One of these days we'll actually have a special guest on. Uh, I was working on it, but... Just getting Je- yeah. Jeremy so on. was I. Special enough. <laughs> yeah, Jeremy's a tough one on his own, for sure. But that's okay. We got him. Two in a row, guys. We got a good record going now. Wait, two in a row? Yeah, he was on last cast. I thought it was... No, I don't remember. We, we've we done three since we've resumed. And Did I miss one? And I missed one. He you missed didn't miss one. one, I missed one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Eddie, you've been here for all of them. Oh, damn. <laughs> hey! hey that's, he actually remembered it this time. Hey, there you go. That That's my one, though, so... <laughs> Theme song. Everybody got one. <laughs> Sick. All right. We can get uh, right into the nitty gritty of it, I suppose. Um, anybody have anything that they're just dying to start with? I am currently drawing a very evil aardvark. Oh, well, what what brought that about? I don't know. Uh, all right. <laughs> no rhyme, no reason, huh? Nope. All right, cool. Hey, man, let the man draw aardvarks. Come on. Hey, no, I'm, I'm not judging. I just, you know, I was curious about the uh, the motivator behind it. Um, inspiration go yeah inspiration <laughs> boredom oh look he posted it oh that's cute oh i'll be sure to put this in on the video so everyone can see it it's beautiful the evil wait art. there's a video it, that's i posted to youtube so you know it's usually just like a, a plain it, you have not been listening to the podcast cruise not even the one you missed fucking disappointed man fucking embarrassing Secretly, I thought I only had to listen to the ones I was here for. Secretly, we have cameras set up in Cruz's room. That's true. To monitor him at all times. The entire so, video is just of him sleeping. So you are here for the last podcast, and that one's up on YouTube. Just saying. Yeah. Yeah, great start. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I'll kick things off then. Um, we're going to get right into show talk. This is going to be fun. Um, I have to add a couple topics here while I'm doing this, so don't mind me being a little weird. So uh, I finally got around to checking out the show Solar Opposites. It's the uh, new one from Justin Roiland and uh, Matt McMahon, I think it is, that both of them obviously worked on Rick and Morty. Um, How have is you guys that? seen I've any yet? Heard- no, I haven't seen any I of it. I have seen a couple commercials, and that's about it. Yeah, um, it's more or less what you expect. Uh, mm. Very much feels like it's coasting off of the Rick and Morty hype. Uh, the first episode was uh, hot garbage. Uh, oh. this, yeah, it was. It was not funny. Maybe more than once. Uh, the next couple episodes, though, they were they were decent. It was it was decent enough, like like a background show type thing. Not not something like with Rick and Morty. Within the first ten seconds, you know, I was fucking in. I was in there, you know. So. Um, but you so know, what, he what brings, was it that did it for you. Was it, they're just not enough drool. Uh, it's, it's just the, the very, the beginning where he just Rick busts into fucking Morty's room and it's just like, hey, uh, Marty, we gotta go Morty, Morty. And it's just like fucking just hammering off lines and, and burping in between. It just, it fucking hooked me right away. Like great opening. And honestly, I didn't expect much from this show without Dan Harmon on it, because really, at the end of the day, Dan Harmon's who I give a fuck about. Man, is a goddamn legend yeah. to me. So. Yeah, literally everything from our childhood, just about. 
pretty much anything yeah. on Nickelodeon at least. I didn't realize that, of, really. Yeah, yeah, he uh he I am like ninety percent sure he was the one who did like Drake and Josh and like about like fifteen other Nickelodeon shows uh that I can't think of off the top of my head. I remember looking at the list and being like, Whoa, he did all of these and then obviously, you know, like community Yeah. Uh, See that's where I first heard of him was a community, but yeah, community is where I picked him up at too. But that's cool. I'll have to look at his IMDb, see what else he's uh, worked on. Um, Harmon Town was great too, and then him and the his buddy whose name I never fucking remember the the great dungeon master guy. Mm -hmm. um, they did oh. like a, a thing of them playing D and D together. And that Harmon Quest, fun. isn't it? Yes, yeah, Harmon, Harmon Quest. Quest. That's what yeah. it was. Yes, yeah. that was excellent. Um, I love the love the animation on it. it. Was like it was cheesy, but like it worked really well with like all the actors. What was the uh, what was the streaming service that one was on for a while? Oh, um, oh Viv, shit, Viv. No, like no, no. It, I think it ended up on there later, but I think originally it was on that same one that um, Comedy Bang Bang was like pimping for a while because uh, they had bajillion uh, dollar. Yeah, that uh, was whatever. the Wolf. I don't remember. I can't remember the name of it, but I'm, I, I, I can tell you. I used to listen to like three or four of the Comedy Bang Bang uh, type uh, podcasts. Oh, there's a oh, lot wow. of great ones out there, yeah. especially anything with Paul of Tompkins on it, man. You can't go wrong. But um, I remember actually I talked about that on either the first or second podcast, like a month before the service died. <laughs> and I was like pimping it out and everything. And, and then it just, poof, gone. Oh, my God. Well, it's funny because I used to, until just recently, there was um, College Humor had one of those. Um, it was called uh, Drop Dropout. <laughs> And I, I liked, uh, they had a drawing show on there, uh, Drawfee, but it was going great. And then everybody at College Humor got fired. Oh, shit. Oh, my gosh. Really? Yeah, it was like, it was like three quarters to four fifths of the staff, including all the people from Drawfee. And I absolutely adore everything they did. I literally only joined that just to wa watch their stuff. God you know? damn. I mean, it was only five dollars a month, so it wasn't like an be all end yeah, all. But I, I think that's about what I was paying for that other service too. It was somewhere around like five bucks a month. So I was like, yeah, I'll throw them a bone. I'll watch some shows. Yeah. Uh, they had that one on there. I can't remember the name of it now, but it has like Tim Baltz, um, and he was like, uh, not really a psychiatrist trying to earn his psychiatrist like thing by doing a bunch of free hours of helping people. And oh, that was a really good show. Yeah, I think I remember you talking about that one. Yeah, I might, yeah, I think I, in fact, talked about that on that podcast, too. <laughs> Probably. It's been a little while. <laughs> yeah, maybe I should go back and listen. But, yeah. Uh. <laughs> and you no were problem. giving me grief. Oh, yeah, well, I listened to most of them. You listen to none of them, bitch. Wow. You don't know that. I that's... listened to the first two. How, how do you listen to this, the, the second one? That That's pretty impressive. It was lost to the ages. Yeah. So, guys, if you didn't hear it on the last like two podcasts, episode two is still lost. I'm hoping to recover it somewhere weird because I'm weird like that. D but didn't didn't we record it on you know my laptop? I want you to go ahead and take a look for me, and <laughs> if you find it, I will be forever grateful. But I'm, let's I'm not get our sure hopes up too is. much. So, continuing on the show talk, um, mm -hmm. anybody like big fans of Parks and Rec? I know oh, Cruz sure. was watching it. Yeah. Cool. yeah, I'm finally getting around to watching it. I'm on the end, like middle endish of season two, but I've seen oh, God. so many episodes from like every season. It's just, oh, just like random order. Yeah. yeah, yeah, fair enough. That's a tough one to do randomly. I mean, there's there's enough like episodicness that you can pull it off, but yeah, a lot of shit yeah, there's changes. a couple of things where I'm just like, wait, who's this character? Or you know, like, <laughs> you just got jammed. <laughs> Fucking love that guy. Yeah, so, you would. <laughs> <laughs> well, he was great. Like, um, that's the same guy who's the um the mask guy in Delocated, which I fucking loved that show. Like the first season. Oh, fucked. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Delocated but, was friggin' ridiculous. <laughs> oh, it was. First season is very rough, but once you get to second season, man, fucking hilarious shit. Hilarious. So anyway, Parks and Rec. 
<laughs> as I was talking about, uh, they just released this whole like um, new quote unquote episode where basically they're just kind of checking up on each other during the whole coronavirus thing going on. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, that was the first time I heard about it. I don't know if you guys have heard about that whole thing yet. I what guess is we, this? like quarantined or something for it. I, I don't know. Uh, it doesn't, but, doesn't ring a bell. No. Nah, yeah. <laughs> so um, it was cool. Um it it was it was kind of a tease more than anything uh though big standouts definitely have to be fucking aubrey plaza no surprise oh, of she's course just amazing a goddess. She's hilarious yeah <laughs> hilarious dude it was great and um i like the way they they kind of did like uh andy's separate because you know obviously they don't live together and all that um but he's basically locked himself in a shed so uh, <laughs> yeah that's not about right for andy yeah <laughs> very good it was it was really nice to see the characters again and they they all jumped right back in and uh some of the jerry gary larry jokes were they they were solid it was it was it was a good watch fun to watch i definitely recommend it if you got like you know 20 30 minutes i think it was to just kind of sit back and watch oh, that's it's, not bad at all yeah they're they're using it to kind of raise funds but they don't really like shove it down your throat they pop up mm-hmm. a couple times like once at the beginning once at the end or so like that mentioning it um but it's, it's mean- mostly like in character yeah, it seems a lo- it seems very in character for Leslie or Amy yeah. Poehler's character Leslie that, to exactly really, to do that sort of thing. That's one hundred percent. And I writer. think I think that definitely helped them kind of get away with that whole concept. And yeah. it's it's enjoyable. It's a good watch. Definitely recommend it. No, oh. I will do that of. once I've finished the whole series. Yeah, all the way fuck through. yeah. Let's in like it, you know, by by next podcast, probably. Yeah, we'll we'll see. <laughs> probably just gonna sleep the whole time so speaking <laughs> of uh the, these weird like covid reunion things this seems to be the hot thing um mm-hmm. and speaking of dan Harmon, it seems like the guys from community minus pierce are going to be getting together to do um basically just like a table read of one of the episodes wow was, even donald glover nice. yeah they even got donald glover yeah that's good that, that's funny because that's even what the article said. Even Donald Glover. It's like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, the nobody man's cares busy. about Chevy Chase. Everybody's no. worried about Donald Glover. Oh yeah, I mean, yeah, pretty <laughs> much. That that was pretty much the death of the show when Donald Glover left. So yeah, for sure, makes all sense. But um, I thought it was interesting though. I it's the episode where um where Pierce is dead. So that's you know a great choice for that. Uh, like like actually dead and um basically they go through the whole like um not bequeathing but like going through his will and all that and Mm -hmm. um it was originally you mean when they won like sperm or they were all donated sperm and that's what yeah everybody got a vile sperm yep (laughs) (laughs) wasn't that what killed him he died of dehydration from giving all the sperm I think something like that, yeah. yeah it, was, it was a very good way of Dan Harmon being like, fuck you, Chevy Chase. So I, I enjoyed that. <laughs> so that's the episode they're doing. Um, and the guy who does like the will reading, the lawyer, it was originally played by uh, Walt, Walter Walton Goggins, the guy from a yeah, billion things now. He was uh, oh. most notably, in my opinion, would be Hateful Eight. He was fantastic in that. <sighs> Oh, and he was in uh, Righteous Gemstones I watched recently with uh, oh. John John Goodman. Um, fucking, what's that guy that plays Adam in Workaholics? Uh, I think his name is Adam, but I can't remember. It's Adam Pauly, isn't it? Adam what? I didn't hear that. Is it Adam Pauly? <laughs> no, not Pauly. It's something. You can look it up or yeah. whatever. I, I, I admit that I, did, I remember him from, uh, from Adam the Hello Div- movie. Yeah. Divine, Deville, Deville divine something like that what's what's the acapella movie pitch perfect yeah I oh yeah he was in pitch perfect wasn't yeah, he him and Wait, him really? and yeah him and rebel wilson have like a, a like a weird <laughs> how and, dare you you got it it's divine so good job Adam Div- oh, divine. Go. yeah cool cool divine divine he's, however you pronounce it yeah, yeah i don't know he's funny as fuck though he did great his stand-up was pretty good too very um self-deprecating but that seems his style yeah yeah right i mean you see the characters he plays so yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah i mean in pitch perfect he was kind of a eh, dude <laughs> yeah but he plays it so well honestly. oh yeah he does it great so yeah. yeah um that's all i got on show talk if anyone else has some kind of show talk to talk to show 
I have watched literal nothing. No, nah, yeah, nothing new there. Well, I, just... <laughs> uh, I went back and watched Evangelion, and by watched, I mean I'm on like the last like three episodes. Finally, um, isn't that so? The you know, ninety show... percent of the shows Shinji's being a whiny little bitch. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And then it's he like, got oh, I wonder what's gonna happen next sexy. episode. Oh, Shinji's gonna be a whiny little bitch. bitch. Yep. Sounds about right. And then it's got red haired girl in that skin tight suit, right? Yeah, she cute, but she cray. Hey, man, all the cuter. Hey. hey. Uh, yeah. yeah, I forgot you like that Sundere type shit anyway, oh, don't you? Oh, you know I do, brother. You know I do. <laughs> so, perfect girl for you? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah. So, how's that, man? I, I've never actually sat down and watched more than like an episode because I just couldn't get through him being a little bitch. I'm like, how am I supposed to? I can't relate to this guy at all. I want to punch him. Just like, <gasps> he God, gets that was gross. a little better. Um, there gets to be a point where he's not as much of a little bitch, and then be- because he's not being as much of a bitch, Asuka becomes more of a bitch because mm. you know, oh no, there's someone better than me. It's nah. it's Insecure. it's got its moments where it's kind of interesting, like it does have like a psychological aspect because you know the whole concept is it's you know giant monsters come in and try to destroy the world, almost succeed. And then humans start fighting back, but only kids can fight them for some reason. So you know, let's send mm. a bunch of fucking barely teenagers to go and fight giant monsters and robots, and you know, maybe we'll give them some training eventually. You know, kind of. <laughs> yeah, they'll figure it out. They play the video games; they'll be able to handle it. This was in like the mid to late nineties that they like finished the series so it's yeah, video games were barely what ti- a thing <laughs> what time oh, shut up video what games time does barely a thing. look look <laughs> what time period does the show take place in though i mean if there's giant max that 2000. people can pilot 2000 so I, arguably kind of the height of video games maybe i don't know when did the ps2 come out ps2 came out in like 2001 yeah so boom yeah I mean, yeah, yeah, but I mean, the okay, so the anime takes place in that time, but it was designed yes. before that time, before they really saw the the big explosion of technology that happened over the last like 15, 20 years. And yes, mm. it was starting to explode. Oh, it was getting God. bigger. But you I are mean, such a kid. <laughs> <laughs> the, the difference I mean, between the technology in the 80s and 90s is bigger than the difference between 90s and today. Trust me. Oh, yeah. Huge. Yeah, no, oh, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll agree with you. Final Fantasy VII was from 1996. Yeah, yep. it's we're and and think 1994. You you're still dealing with Super Mario World. I mean, yeah. all flat worlds and yeah, which was still fucking amazing. So I mean, yeah. let's get real there. I mean, the, the biggest jump is right there in the mid to late 90s. That's where we get the real big jump in video game. Yeah. You know, because then you jump from seven to eight, and just think about just how much different seven versus eight looks. Oh yeah, which I've actually been playing Eight Remastered. It looks fucking amazing, dude. I am. Oh, the remaster away. looks great. I mean, I still hate the whole side story with uh fucking what's his name and the other guys. Uh, the Laguna. Yeah, yeah, that whole. Uh, you mean Squall's just... dad? Oh, is that what that is? Okay. I yeah, Laguna is Squall's daddy. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense, actually. And the and the singer chick, that's actually yeah. Renoa's mom. Oh, that's oh that all right. That's actually kind of cool, and I'm not at all hurt that that was spoiled for me. <laughs> Honestly, that that makes me want to play more. Kid. Twenty years. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm way behind on playing the game, but it just... well, let's be honest. If you were gonna do it, you probably would have would have done it by now. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, I mean, I'm doing it. And I'm, I'm I'm at least on disc two's worth now, so I did some good movement. But Julia, Julia, it's Julia. Yeah, Julia, yeah, Julia, Julia, yeah. Julia, 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 Julia Roberts, Julia, Julia. So, but that's a good segue into game talk, I suppose. So, I what have we all been so. playing? What are we playing, guys? Let's do it. Whole lot of nothing. You bitch. <laughs> what about you, Eddie? Uh, 
What's your city, city Skylines? <laughs> Dude, that game is fire, though, okay? Anyone who ever played SimCity, you need to get on that City Skylines. I have probably ooh. close to 500 hours in it now ooh, over the last damn. few years, so... That, that's fucking badass. <laughs> I mean, that's not even a scratch on the surface of uh, somebody I know's Overwatch hours, but we're oh, not going to get yeah, no out comment. <laughs> But, um... <laughs> No, I mean, I found this really cool map that's literally like the hex, a bunch of hexes instead of like the squares. Um, so it looks like the settler is a Catan board. Oh God! So you're so you're you're building all your your city on these little hexes that are divided by this river, and each little hex has a highway going all around it and a little railroad going all around it. So. I was just like, ooh, I'm gonna buy this hex and I'm gonna put it I'm gonna put university there and I'm gonna put this here. So what like the he- each hex is like a whole city or I mean each hex you can make them all a whole city, but they're all connected already with the highways, so they can be connected with each other. It's very it, like Sim City Skylines, as you expand, you get to yeah. buy more like little spots. Oh, so you can basically like, expand your city out. Expand the city out, yes. Oh, but okay. They've got this lined up that ever that that it's like little hexes that go that looks like uh so it looks like the settlers of Catan board. It's really cool actually. But nice. Yeah, as you can tell I have not played a whole lot of the game, but what I have played of it I really enjoyed. Yeah. I also cheated my ass off because I just wanted to build shit. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean you just turn on the infinite money and you're fine. And it doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah, basically. That's yeah, at that point, you just that. sit there and you, all right, let's see how, how high of a population I can get. Oh, yeah. yeah. I might have to drop back in that game at some point for sure. It's cool just to turn it on and just let it run. And yeah. Then, then I get to stare at my gotcha game. Oh, God. Gotcha. <laughs> gotcha is just one thing I cannot abide by. Like, I love the concept. I enjoy, like, doing it. But, like, it's I just can't stick with it, man. Just can't. It, it's weird once you get to the point where it's, you, you've collected just so much stuff and you've been playing so long. It's like, all right, I, I, it's just it's a thing. It's just part of your daily routine now. OK, I'm going to get on here and collect my feathers, collect See, my that, orbs. <laughs> I kind of got that way with um, uh, what was that? Kingdom Hearts uh, key, I think it was the, mm-hmm. the, the mobile one back when it was originally released in Japan and some fucking nerds figured out, Hey, we can uh, make this work on your phone too here in America. You won't be able to read any of what this shit says, but Hey, <laughs> you get to play. And honestly, I, I got more into that one. Cause I did have a lot of fun with the gameplay and building like the different deck styles, you know, it was very reminiscent of uh chain of memories, chain of memories in that yeah. way, which everyone uh, shits on, but that game was amazing. I fucking love chain of memories. The original, well, think, not the remake. The remake uh, with the <laughs> PS2 graphics fucking hated that. It was awful. <laughs> he but, preferred the sprite based. What was it? Yeah. Yes. It was just yeah. regular DS at the time, wasn't it? No, it was a uh, GBA, actually. Was it GBA? Oh, yeah, my it was yeah, GBA. It was. Yeah. No, and I, I really enjoyed that game, man. Uh, just deck building and swapping out decks for different places. And I don't know, man. It, it really spoke to me. No, I mean, I understand about the deck building. Um, well, that's the thing with this one. This is uh, the Fire Emblem Heroes game. Oh, yeah. It's the gameplay is so reminiscent of the real Fire Emblem games, quote, quote, quote. You know, well, it's the old school. Yeah. Well, I mean, all of them. All of them are like that, except oh, okay. for like Fire Emblem Warriors. They're still grid based, you know, right. turn based, you know, strategy RPGs. They just have different ways of doing it. Yeah. So, and this, this one, it's, it's fairly robust. So, you know, it's just each map is very small and each map has only a few units at a time. But, you know, it's It's a really good challenge. It's a really good thing. Yeah, and I really enjoy the Fire Emblem games um, for the gameplay. You know, very kind of scratches that Final Fantasy Tactics itch that I get every, like, month or so. And Mm -hmm. it just, for me... (sighs) It's I still have yet to have this aesthetic, anything, the aesthetic and anything match up to what tactics like delivered for me. Uh, I just with Fire Emblem, it feels so like like ugh, cliche Japanese like warrior thing that I just it doesn't doesn't work. Oh, for yeah. Me. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's it's all everyone is a lord or a mercenary. Yeah. 
I'm like, eh. eh, eh, eh. Or noble. Yeah, it's all nobles and mercenaries. So, Which, yeah, it, I mean, granted, if you look at tactics, it was lords, noble, yeah. mercenaries. <laughs> same, same idea. I mean, for but that just time aesthetic. period, that's kind of how it worked. Exactly. Yeah. And, and you know me, and medieval stuff don't really get along or whatever you want to yeah. call it. Um, I honestly think what it is is because... It's the color palette. It's the color it's palette. One hundred percent got to be the color palette because everything else is much brighter. You just yeah. love that desaturated, gothic Ooh. take. You know, Ooh. love it. Very dark, and I get it. I mean, it get, it almost feels really lo- realistic in a lot of ways because it's so yeah. dark. Yeah, despite being you know goofy looking little <laughs> sprites, you know, <laughs> goofy little sprites on just the blockiest freaking three D oh. terrain. Yeah, yeah. Pre Minecraft, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Minecraft isn't even as good as that, that though. No, yeah. Oh Without you know getting other texture packs. Uh, That's funny. <laughs> yeah. Oh uh, so, yeah, Minecraft uh, actually released their RTX now. So. Yeah, sick. I don't have yeah. a card that does it, but I won't. Neither do soon. I. But yeah, it's just it's amazing <laughs> that like one of the first things with the ray tracing is Minecraft. I'm not surprised, dude. Microsoft, when they bought that shit, they're just like, fuck it, dude. It's oh, already huge. We'll keep this fucking ball rolling. Oh, and they knew. They Milk it. Monetize the shit out of it. And I'm like, ugh. Ugh. But yeah, I mean, that's why I, I want to get the Java version again, just because then I don't have to deal with Microsoft's dicky restrictions. But Microsoft version does support cross play. Yeah. So, see, the restrictions aren't as bad as they once were. I've played mm. quite a bit of the, the Windows 10 edition, and gotcha. it's it's they. I mean, you're not gonna run mods on it, but yeah. I that's, mean, by that's... this point, there's so much shit in the game that you're not gonna freaking notice unless yeah, you're but... trying to do something very specific. So my my wonder though is how much is the Windows 10 version like the console versions because the console versions they just recently added some ways to kind of change your character's look but like you get like three oh. options oh you can just and... straight up I, you can just straight up import uh, uh, okay okay yeah. cool as as long as that's still around that's yeah. one of the big things for me yeah. like yeah you can straight up import that's what I did because on the console they charge for literally everything you can imagine like texture yeah. packs fucking character textures you have to buy like individual pieces it's just fucking nickel and yeah they they, and can, they still have that in the window of course, the Windows version. Of course yeah yeah well, but yeah. but i you know i managed to upload i mean i have uh victor from suikoden 2 oh, is nice. my yeah i mean i doubt that would be something they'd officially put out so oh yeah no the t- yeah, like they, they, anybody, anybody outside of like thirty thousand people even know what Suikoden is. Yeah, yeah, for real. So, God. bring it back. I know what Come it is. I just never played any of it. Oh, dude, you got to get in on that. It's fucking great. Oh, I see. That looks good, actually. Yeah, it's a very good one. I have one for Flick and a few other characters from Suikoden games. Cause hell yeah. yeah, fuck yeah, dude. That's so. gonna go on the video too. <laughs> um, I'm liking this. I can get pictures together for this for next podcast. This this might add a See? nice little layer. See, like I'm it. adding media to the to our to our. <laughs> well, you know, I'm not gonna be the the progressive one here. Just look at me. I'm <laughs> not not happening. No, hey, you're a better dresser than me. So that's uh, that's. I mean, send the bar real low. No offense, but <laughs> I'm wearing literally and one shorts. So. <laughs> Awesome. Those are comfy as fuck, though. So yes, no judgments they are. here. They are. No judgments. They are. Um, so I've been playing Left 4 Dead again. It's been fucking awesome. So awesome. Um, I actually think I like the original more than two, to be honest with you. Which, you know, what's really fucking annoying about two on PC though is to get split screen going. That is such fucking nonsense. Well, it is a lot of work. Yeah, so you have it's I mean, it's not technically a lot, a lot of work, but it's like it just feels like I shouldn't have to do any work for something that was, you know, included in the console versions. Like I understand PC personal computer. It's not really designed as much for that. But if anyone could pull it off, why not the PC? 
um but basically you have to um subscribe to a mod type thing it's this weird thing they do on steam that i'm still not totally understanding but it works so not complaining um and then you have to go into like the console and type in some stuff and just do do weird stuff to get it running and working right and it just is like what why why do i have to do all that basically extra steps when they could have just put a two-player menu in there and like yeah. hit a button and start yeah but that would make too much sense yeah, too much, man. Too. They, they'd rather you buy another computer and buy it again on Steam again for somebody else's account. And uh, Speaking yeah. of Steam, actually, this was something me and Eddie were kind of talking about before we started the podcast, and I wanted to actually go in depth on this. So, do you know, yeah. you can borrow games on Steam. Now, this is fucking weird and interesting, and I honestly, I really like it. I'm really happy that they did something like this. So, basically, so- what it requires is... Um, Say, uh, like, for instance, I was on my girlfriend's computer and I had logged in, downloaded some games so she could play it on the caveat that obviously she wouldn't be able to do if I was on and playing and all that. Um, so then we signed her up so she could get Halo and all the games that were downloaded showed up on the side. And I was just like, oh, that's weird. So I clicked on them and it's had this big banner where it normally says play and it says borrow. So what you do is you click that and it sends a um, email to me, the person she's trying to borrow from like, Hey, do you want to let them access this? And you can just go, yeah, sure. Fucking let her do it. So the rules are basically when you're borrowing, you can play the game as long as I'm not playing the game as well. And that's, I mean, it's that simple. It's like literally borrowing a physical disc, the limitations of that. And I, I think that's great. You know, that's, yeah, I mean, it's it's almost like a demo-ish type period. It's weird. Well, and that's the thing is you can fully play the game all the way through as if you yeah. physically borrowed it or owned it. And um, I think, I don't know, that's cool. It's, it's, that was always my biggest complaint with digital. I mean, on some systems, I've found a way around that. PC hasn't been able to do such a thing, and I still haven't found my way around it. But it's it's a good way to be like, hey, you know, try this game out. And then if they like it and there's multiplayer, then they could always buy it and then we could play together without them, you know, having to sink money in and then be like, oh, fuck, I hate this game. Why did I do this? You know? Yeah, because nothing's worse than when you go and it's like, okay, I'm going to buy this brand new game, drop 60 bucks or, you know, more if you're getting one of the deluxe editions. And then surprise, the game sucks. Well, you know, that's kind of on you, though, if you buy a digital or a deluxe edition of a game without knowing for sure that that game is going to be amazing for you. That is why I say fuck pre-orders. Fuck them. I can agree with that. See, it's it's got to be... It's hard. Because I pre-ordered the super mega ultra top of the line edition for the, the, for the last Fire Emblem that came out. But I am a known lover of the series. Yeah, yeah. see, that's, yeah. that's exactly. I mean, like, if I had the money I wanted to spare, I would have gotten the super ultra deluxe... Um, final fantasy 7 remake but just the money wasn't there at the time and honestly mm-hmm. eh, i don't really need a hardy daytona statue i'm good on that hardy I'm daytona saying. it's so stupid yeah it's a silly ass name that's in case you didn't know cruz that's what they named his bike it's called the hardy daytona wait really yeah. <laughs> yep which, you know, shout out, I feel like I've included in something that's been a part of my childhood in a way, being, you know, near Daytona. But yeah. at the same time, it just, even looking at the name written, it's just like, oh, ew. All right. Ugh. Yeah, well, that's because we've actually been to Daytona. <laughs> well, and we yeah. know all the Harley dealerships, Harley dealerships around yeah. here. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Which, one, but still. <laughs> yeah, all one of them, but no. Well, there's like two or three, but... um, And that's, like, the thing, too. Like, it's funny. I actually talked to a lot of people who, like, move here from out of state, and they all think Daytona is just going to be Steal My Sunshine video all the time. And they get out here, and it's, like, drug addicts and homelessness and just nothing. <laughs> it's, it's funny that this got it. brought up, because Greg and I have been doing research for basically, like, a documentary based on like the the real happenings of when mtv was here and it was this big craze turns out they were not here for months on end like they made it seem 
they came in oh, yeah. they got their footage for like a couple days to a week they got yeah. out and oh, then yeah. the next three to eight weeks was just fucking clips, clips and versus uh, after, clip, after clip after clip Exactly. Hey guys, we're here at Daytona Spring Break 1987. Meanwhile they're, uh, in, like, meanwhile, they're in like San Francisco or something in a stage. Yeah. That, well, that not only that, but they basically kind of came with their own crowd. It, like some of it was like locals. Oh. Yeah. But it was not like the all out nonstop parties like they were making it seem. A lot of it was more tame than it actually was portrayed on TV shocker i know so reality tv not being reality so <laughs> basically they used our city to stage this whole play i guess you could call it to kind of make them look yeah. interesting and i mean to an extent yes it was busy and yes there was you know like there was there was one pizza shop that apparently they made so much money that yes people came they trashed their store they Ooh. legitimately had to uh, maybe not every year, but every few years, they would have to redo the entire store, gut it, redo, remodel everything. Jesus. But they made so much money that they could afford to do that and still come out and profit. So it, on, on the opposite end, there was some hotels that, shocker, broke college kids didn't have the money to pay to fix all the shit they broke when they were coming around drinking fucking bottle after bottle after bottle. And then smashing it on the ground and leaving trails of everything and burning things to the ground. All right. So oh. yeah, there was what definitely the like in. yeah. <laughs> no, that was a whole <laughs> another thing. <laughs> he yeah, got yeah. arrested. He got out. He got arrested again. And then they finally realized, oh, this dude's been like soliciting like sex for younger like. Boys and girls, there was all sorts of child pornography. There was all sorts of sex crimes. There's this whole crazy thing. They We've were been running onto that, too. They were running into that when the Girls Gone Wild crew was coming through out here, too. Oh, no surprise there. Yeah, there was a I lot of issues with out. underage. <laughs> Red Hot Chili Peppers had an incident, and I'm not going to go too far into detail because I don't know all the details, and, you know, from what I'm hearing... Uh, they were never so they they were arrested, but they were never charged hmm. of a sexual assault. Oh, shit. yeah, yeah. I didn't, uh, let's apparently, be they on jumped <laughs> off the stage and something happened. I don't know anything more than that. All I know is two of the members did get arrested, and they were later released, and that was about as far as it goes. Wow. So, well, this uh. This turned pretty dark pretty quick, fellas. <laughs> uh, I think now that's Daytona is for you. Probably a good time for uh, or uh, back then. My next big topic here. Can so can can we play that like, like legally? Loud. It's less than 15 seconds. They can't do shit. I, I mean, after, after your little bo bombshell against the Red Hot Chili Peppers, I don't know. We're going to be having a lot of fun here. <laughs> We're never going to be able to monetize this. It's fine. Don't even worry about it. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, actually, uh, with the missus today, we watched uh, Rise of Skywalker and getting to sit down and actually have an enjoyable experience where I didn't have to piss the entire movie was was a good way to watch it. And i still sticking by. I liked it more than fucking Last Jedi by a long shot. Long shot. Yeah, I can agree with that. It was it was a pretty good movie overall. Yeah. I mean, it felt like an actual Star Wars movie, which I feel like Last Jedi was missing a lot of, as if Rian Johnson just didn't really ever watch Star Wars and just was like, ah, I'll come take this. You know, I, I watched the, the last movie. That's enough, right? So... <laughs> I'll I'll say this. I think the first one in this group was the worst. I honestly really? think last, I think Last Jedi. Well, Last Jedi was trying to do something new. Now I don't think it did a good job of it. Not at all. But I think it was trying something. Whereas, look, what the hell was see, it? 
But the problem is, and I will defend Force Awakens till the end of my life for this, because everyone whines about how much it's like the original. But y'all bitches couldn't get over the prequels being different, so you wanted it to go back, so you got what you wanted. That's uh, on you, motherfuckers. Oh no, see, I liked episode three. Episode, and episode one is meh, but not the worst. Not honestly, episode going two back was through the gar- it. was garbage. Honestly, um, going through them, not there's not a bad movie abo- among them, in my opinion. Oh, episode two was garbage. Yeah, it was, but, it was, it was, it was okay. That's yeah, what I would call it. But no, I'd say I say that I think Rise uh, the Last Jedi was pretty decent. I, yeah. I liked a lot of things. It was, that... So my biggest qualm with the Last Jedi was basically nothing happened in that entire movie. Like all that happened was basically they retconned everything Abram set up. Just just fucking ignored it. Just said ah, that's none, none of that happened. There and was then, some retconning, yeah. That's it. That's all the movie was. There nothing really happened. And that was the longest movie, but nothing happened in it. It was so boring. Boring. What was that okay. fucking the only action scene that I can remember is the stupidest scene I've ever seen in a Star Wars movie. Dumber than anything Jar Jar Binks has ever done or said or anything was the stupid part with Finn and um what's her name? Rose running on those stupid animals and it's like the most like obvious cg i've ever seen in my life so, and so just... you're missing missing the part where they get that huge fight in the throne room that, that was, was... <sighs> i felt it didn't feel good though like the 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 talking and everything just felt it felt very forced and very i don't know it mm. it just didn't feel like a real battle like i feel like rise of skywalker's battles were much more like especially when uh ray and um Ben were on the the part of the Death Star and the water fighting. Oh yeah, that no, was that an was a really amazing scene. Yeah, the Fantastic. whole the whole the whole Death Star sequence I think definitely was the best part of uh, Rise of Skywalker. Was oh, that whole dude. Death's because there was a so lot of good. legitimate you know feelings that I just I think it was the ending where it just felt everything with the Emperor felt very forced. It's like oh, <laughs> oh I, we I need can't, to, I'll agree with that for sure. We gotta we gotta throw the Emperor in here. We oh we need a bad guy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know yeah which to their benefit they did kind of preface that at the very beginning of the movie like this is what this is going to be about so you better just buckle in for this shit yeah oh yeah yeah i'm not <laughs> but you know saying that doesn't necessarily make it a good idea no i 100 mean, agree yeah i mean we all knew ahead of time that this is what it was going to be Though, but it just felt I, like <laughs> i gotta say i gotta say one i definitely called this shit from the start that she was a palpatine two yeah that part though, when she's like approaching with the lightsaber, and her and it keeps cutting back and forth between her and Ben, and then she puts the lightsaber behind her, and then pulls her hand out, and it's empty, and then he pulls out the lightsaber. Fuck, man, that that scene for some reason just gives me chills. Yeah. I fucking love that addition to like the Force powers. That is the coolest fucking thing to me. I mean, I guess what, you didn't like the Force healing. The Force healing was cool. I, I I did the first time I saw it I was like oh shit oh shit oh shit but like I don't know just to be able to like transfer matter through space like that it's just it's so cool to me mm-hmm. especially the way they use that for the whole lightsaber I mean he came very unprepared because obviously he threw away his lightsaber and everything but I just ah yeah. oh, god that moment hits me hard yeah no it was really interesting it, 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 that, that whole it was just weird that they they kept flying off the oh you guys are a forced dyad what the fuck does that even mean yeah i i would like to know more about that and i'm gonna have to pick up the book and see if maybe that explains more because the book does explain that the palpatine that we see in that movie is just a clone of him so yeah but we we knew that was what it was going to be based on uh based on anybody who had knowledge of the old expanded universe exactly because that's how he did it there so we we fully expected that to be yeah exactly which you know honestly there, there's a lot of cool shout outs to the expanded expanded universe in there um I yeah, which i found kind of cool because i didn't think that they were going to keep much of it when they were when they started doing these new movies no, i right? heard that like a lot of it was going to get dropped Same. so and what was it uh rebels actually brought thrawn into the picture i i almost shit myself when i read about that and thrawn didn't you oh my god I think you Thrawn was in Rebels. Book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did lend you one of the books. Yeah, with uh, but, with 
but yeah he uh shows up in there and i haven't yet to watch it because rebels is like as bad as the animation is in clone wars and i love that show don't get me wrong the animation of rebels just makes me want to throw up like oh god they're just ugly ugly characters yeah it definitely takes uh an adjustment period to sit down and watch yeah and it it feels like they took the clone wars art style and then like cut the quality down by like 50 percent because it's less detailed like Uh, disney's trying to make money (laughs) yeah yeah they're just i don't know it's rough which speaking of clone wars fucking ahsoka my dude uh, yeah i can't believe at the end of this movie they fucking had her say something to ray that that gets me every time. That was a big like, deal. Yes. Thank you. They and added her in to, there. She's supposed to be in the new season of Mandalorian too, I think I was hearing. Is what? she? What? Wow. That's what I was hearing. Really excited about Cause, that. Cause oh, Boba, yeah, because oh, Boba yeah. Fett's going oh. to be. Yeah. Because they just that's, announced that the guy who played. That's not too Django, surprising. Django yeah. That, well, I mean, technically Boba Fett dies at the end of, uh, ep, you know, at the beginning of episode uh, six. Uh, Return of the Jedi, but yeah, technically, so, I mean, yeah, nobody in these freaking in any show ever stays dead, but still, no, and I mean that was very many expanded universe books had basically said, hey, yeah, he got out of the Sarlacc pit somehow. It's, I mean, it's just, I mean, Darth you can't Maul. kill such a cool fucking character. Yeah, I mean, seriously, oh, yeah, well, you can't, you, you can't even t- talk about like characters coming back unless you bring up Darth Maul. Yeah. Who has like died like what like six different times throughout oh. all the, the the movies and then Clone Wars and but even if you didn't watch any of the Clone Wars or anything, it, it literally he gets cut in half in Episode One and yeah. then he shows back up again in uh, Solo. So yeah, like, <laughs> so at that point, yeah. it's like, oh yeah, yeah, this is one hundred percent part of the deal now. <laughs> yeah, wait right. a sec. Yeah, I for, I didn't even think about that because not only was uh, it cut in half, he falls into like this seemingly bottomless pit like yeah judging by age a hundred percent i would oh that's such a star wars thing though falling in a oh, bottomless yeah. pit oh my god oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's how oh. you represent the far far flung technological future of the past yeah. everybody's falling into <laughs> shit fell you know far far away <laughs> oh i mean they did that with ren and and rise of the skywalker which was oh, yeah. a fake out of course uh, but course. no, so obviously Solo definitely takes place after the prequels, so it's like... Well, yeah, I mean, based on their ages, yeah, I mean, it was yeah. obvious, but... Very, yeah. so, so if he's back, he's back. So I it's mean... it's kind of during the, the end period of the Clone Wars uh, show, because I know Han Solo, the character as a young man, shows up in one of the Clone Wars episodes. Oh shit, I didn't realize that. Yeah, I know he, he has a thing with Yoda... I think he actually hangs out with Yoda of all things. That's so. fucking rad, though. I would love to see that. I gotta, I gotta go finish that show for sure, especially with the the final season just coming out and everything. Yeah, um, I've been rewatching that. I'm on like season two. Oh yeah, dude, that's a good, it's a good show. Really good it, show. It really is. Yeah. Art style takes a little bit of adjusting when you first start watching it no for sure but, but it like i said it's not as bad as rebels or what, a, what was the other one that they did that was like even more dumbed down looking oh uh, it's like resistance or something like yeah, that. yeah the, the resistance or something like that i have not the, watched that at all uh, okay i i will say i watched rebels and it was the art style you kind of make the adjustment but i i don't think i could even pry with resistance like i I looked at it. I think I started playing the, the intro and was like, "Nope, I I can't, I can't." Damn. And I backed out of it and That's bad. turned off the app and was just like, "I'm I'm just gonna go to sleep instead." Yeah, and see, this feels like a good time to kind of branch out more into the Star Wars stuff because with Risers of Skywalker being, you know, done and over with for a while now, it's it's kind of. We're not. I don't think we're getting another movie anytime soon, if I'm not mistaken. Well, um, Taika Waititi got announced as the director for the next ones. That's right. That's, that's right. true. But it could but, be a while, like a couple yeah, years. Yeah, I don't think least, they're going to be especially. filming anytime soon. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there ain't yeah. shit going on anytime soon. So we're in kind of an area where I don't feel like it's being so shoved down my throat as it was. Yeah. Because by time, pretty much 
the first movie loved it rogue one absolutely adored it it's rogue one was great the yeah best of all of the movies honestly but um after that it just especially the shit that last jedi was for me i just uh, i started checking out hard you know and solo was you know it was a movie that's that's for sure that much i'll give it i didn't hate sure solo was. but it, it had some weird choices <laughs> well that was the thing is it was such a a safe movie i feel like yeah like, like the most quintessential like 90s family movie kind of approach i mean it was <laughs> ron howard so you know you do yeah that. but but i was surprised given you know like han solo is like very clearly the guy that kind of like walks around kind of skirts through like that just outside the normal and kind of into that like seedy underbelly kind of thing yeah so i yeah, thought was... there was going to be more of that than there was in the movie yeah the the most you got of that was when he met up with donald glover as lando that was pretty much it and even that felt kind of light yeah exactly it uh, felt like they were definitely felt grittier oh yeah mandalorian is significantly grittier no. oh yeah that's kind of more where i expected the level of grit to be for solo but it wasn't but yeah. i mean han solo's character is not a serious one <laughs> not it's, by any means. yeah he's that's he, true i mean because that's <laughs> the difference between mandalorian the mando's you know a significantly more serious very down to earth whereas both lando and han, and han are very flamboyant characters right you're, so, you're you're right on that <laughs> so, for sure so, so they're more like your bonnie and clyde you know mafioso rather than the you know the the unbroken or you know the serious serious mafia movies right right yeah damn uh, that's my theory no oh, that's yeah i think yeah. you're spot on there man it's a good i'm it's really good take looking forward to watching uh more mandalorian whenever they get that out i'm no rush or anything take your time do it right guys make it make it oh, good yeah. do fine it right. by me that's all that matters but, um, i started watching the behind the scenes documentary thing which is more just kind of like the directors and like the heads of everything kind of just chatting about their experience i was hoping for a lot more of like how, being able to see how they did it and you know just you know, the good behind the scenes shit that i live for but so far i haven't seen much of that and maybe just because i got part of the way through the first episode and was just like yeah, 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 yeah. i guys... think disney only threw it together because they absolutely needed more content for the machine yeah no for sure i mean that's their main source of income i imagine right now yeah there is oh definitely right now. <laughs> now their, their the subscriptions are up but I still Don't think you know. that that's one of those things. It's it's going to be hard, you know, for everybody who actually subscribes. There's like five other people in the room who are watching it who don't pay shit for it. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's still I better mean, to get that fi get that five dollars or whatever out of the one person than to get no nothing. Oh yeah, no, for sure. I mean, I'm not I'm not saying don't don't do it. And I think that they them especially now, given how many people are running through everything that's on virtually any streaming yeah. platform that they have very quickly because most people who are non-essential have nothing but time yeah yeah a lot but, of us do not anymore have that free time and that is a weird adjustment to make as someone who never had to make that adjustment i'm so sorry guys <laughs> oh no dude i'm sorry you've been working this whole time well, that's rougher in my opinion. Because yeah. for me, it was like a vacation. Honestly, I'd never been as mentally well as I have been during quarantine. And going back wow. to work has just been like, oh, yeah, this is real life. That's right. <laughs> oh. All right. Cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm still kind of in that in-between where, like, uh, you know, I took the time, been really wor working on getting, like, you know, the house in order, you know, people moving in, having to get everything settled a little bit more. Yeah. But you know all in all it, it's been very healing for me it's given me a lot of time to get that clarity that i needed that i felt like i was just rushing 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 get to the next gig yeah. get to the next gig yeah now exactly. i'm trying to find a way to branch back out without branching back out yeah 
And I mean, that's, that's why I'm glad you're going the whole streaming route because that's a much more sustainable model with things like this happening. I mean, and it's just also when you get back doing gigs, it's, it's just another source of income. So can't complain. The, the last stream we did was actually pretty cool. We, that's what we, I've been hearing. We hooked up the console. It was a, a digital console, Soundcraft UI. So you can connect to that with the iPad and mix from, from like wherever. So the only thing we we did was we brought a car battery, an inverter, and plugged in the UI and the router, and that's it. We can literally pop up and do an acoustic set or something, you know, eight inputs Which, anywhere, yeah, anywhere dude, we want. Major shout out to Greg for putting that together. That is a really, really fucking cool, like, idea, and the fact that it worked so well, just, it's it's awesome. Like, I think that could be something you know maybe marketable if you really wanted to get into that side of things but at the end of the day it's just really convenient that you can throw something together like that and it work i'm hoping that it's going to help change the industry a little bit because at this point you know we're we've as musicians everyone's so tied to oh you want to play a gig well you can't go out and start playing amphitheaters so you know what you have to do? You have to go to that bar and beg somebody to give you time. And if you're lucky, they'll pay you some money. Yeah, exactly. And this but kind now, of puts more of the, the work yeah, and I everything mean, into your hands. So it's more yeah, exactly. I mean, at this point, we don't even have to go back to venues. We can pop up in a park and do it wherever. We can go under the bridge. We can go on the bridge. Who gives a shit? Obviously, you know, do, doing it safely, like, you know, sidewalks and you know, yeah, planning and, and you stuff. Yeah, be careful. But... Some some places you kind of have to get permission and shit. But oh, of I don't course, know of course. Anything about that? So, yeah, exactly. And, you know, that's one of those things. You know, as this becomes more relevant, you know, we'll do all the kinks on that and everything. But yeah. it, it gives us a little more leverage. Where you yeah. know, it's like, okay, well, I should have to go and play at your venue because why? You want me to bring customers to you. You don't give me a cut of door sales. You don't give me a cut of alcohol sales. You make 15 times more than I do in, in a night. And if we stop playing, people start leaving. So why should I have to bend over backwards for you to not pay me? Because it's publicity. Oh, yeah. I, I, mean, I get exposure. This is 100% the... Uh... The biggest issue with the arts. This is very much something you will always run into. Yeah. Yeah, but at least you know now that you know we're we're realizing there is ways for us to kind of take that back, and it this yeah. this whole quarantine thing has actually kind of leveled the playing field between us. You know, at the early stages of our careers in the music industry, and all these guys that have been in it for for decades. And guess what? They're not playing shows. We're not playing shows. Oh, well, we sort of are. We're all streaming. And so yeah. now it's a matter of, well, who's streaming at the right time? And, you know, how do they monetize it? How well is it being monetized? What do they have that makes them stand out? A lot of these streams, you know, even these big artists, not all of them have streams that are quality audio. Like a lot of them, they're just putting a phone in the room and yeah. <laughs> playing and singing and it's like dude my stream shouldn't sound better than the dude who's been doing it for 20 30 years well see that's like, the problem just though shouldn't. is there an artist they're not necessarily like us where we're artists slash engineers that's something that only really it feels like recently has been i mean it's always been around obviously a lot of people have learned while they're out on stage would you know learn from their engineers but lately it's because it's so easy to be the engineer too, we we almost feel like it's necessary to do so. So there's a lot of us popping up artists, engineers everywhere. I mean, everyone's fucking doing it at this point, you know. Oh, True. The number of people that stop in at my work and try and try to get all their hardware situated for it. Oh yeah. Well, it's oh, crazy. I bet you get that all the time. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> And I just send them right on sell, to you. <laughs> sell interfaces like fucking crazy, dude. And it's it's interesting. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> it's a weird, weird world we live in. For this reason and this reason alone. No other reason at all. No, yeah, no, no, not nothing at all. No. Not Everything at all. else is normal. Yeah. 
Yeah, exactly. No, no Have you change. guys ever heard of a band called Goat? Goat? No. Yeah, it stands for Greatest of All Texas, I believe it was. Okay. Um, funny ass shit. Uh, let me let me give you a little clip real quick of it. It's um not for the little ears. Yeah, so not good, but funny as fuck. Especially you watch the videos. I mean, there's parts where he literally is playing a tambourine by smacking his dick on it. Like in clothed dick, you don't see his bare dick. It's YouTube, guys. But I, it's it's weird because the songs get stuck in your head, but they're not good. So what is this? What is this? It's like a Captain Beefheart thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, kind of. Um, it's funny, the, the first video I saw of him um, performing, he actually had a drummer for that one too. Um, it looked like basically like a backyard meth head party, which was pretty funny. And there's this one part that just, it gets me every time. And I'll, I'll send you guys the link. And when you see it, it's, it's fucking ridiculous, but it, it gives me the giggles for sure. For sure. <laughs> Just figured I'd throw that out there. Just wanted to share some some laughter in these trying times, you know, in these uncertain times. These just, uncertain God. Times. We could all use a giggle or two, okay? <laughs> uh, it's okay. I just watch a bunch of YouTubers, and I'm like, yeah, I feel like one of the kids. <laughs> <laughs> that's See, that's the thing, man, is like, it's almost like I want to try to do that, but at the same time, like I don't actually like watch many YouTubers. There's like maybe a, a, a two people I watch on there, and that's mm -hmm. that's about it. Like like the people I watch, it's almost it's like a lot of just very serious, very scholarly. You know, hey, we're we're gonna make this funny, but it's gonna be very, you know, it's gonna be a very dedicated project. Exactly. You know, hey. Yeah, you know, this is a literature analysis from Lindsay Ellis, or, or like, oh, that's cool. Yeah, it, people like that. It's very, it's funny, but it's also very. <laughs> we're going to take this very seriously, and we're going to be very analytical. Or yeah. it's just somebody bullshitting their ass through things, and they readily admit they're bullshitting it, and it's hilarious. Oh yeah, who's that popular guy that does uh, album reviews? He's kind of bald, looks like he wants to be Moby. God, what's his name? Oh, I don't know. Oh. Because that's exactly who I thought of when you said bullshitting their way through. <laughs> no, uh, uh, no, it's like people who are like playing, like playing games, but they're like just making jokes the entire time they're playing and oh, dying gotcha. repeatedly. Yeah, it's like, well, it's like five guys are oh, playing, and some of them are pretty deep. Shit, you, you guys know? are actually watching my sh my uh, videos. Thanks. Yeah, you're Appreciate pretty bad. That. Yeah. So. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, we all yeah. start somewhere. And then end. And yeah, I was gonna say we're, we're we're a little past the starting with the video games thing. Oh yeah, what's that? What's a bitch <laughs> game? What's a bitch game? Bitch game. Bitch game. Huh. So I was thinking of um getting on and maybe streaming a little uh, play gameplay. I don't know if you guys were interested in playing anything, joining me on for that, or huh. maybe I was thinking about joining some guys to try Warzone. I'm not a Call of Duty guy, but it's free. Oh, yeah. For some reason, I thought of, like, War of Tanks when you said that. <laughs> World of Tanks. <laughs> World of Tanks, that's it. Yeah. World of Tanks. War of Tanks. World, World, of of War tanks. War World of War of Tanks of ships. <laughs> All right. Yeah, let's do it. That sounds right up not my alley. So, oh. um, I'll sit here going, this is a T-54 Russian super tank. Uh, the <laughs> Yeah, I in don't, World War II, they produced 14 million of these every six hours. Um, how informative is Girls und Panzer? <laughs> Girls und Panzer. <laughs> <laughs> I heard it's pretty accurate. I don't know, though. This is <laughs> just hearsay. <laughs> oh. hey, a little quiet girl. This is a this is an 80 millimeter. <laughs> How is her? I can fire four four and a half kilometers. Quiet. Oh. <laughs> oh no, I fell down. 
Yeah, I, and then she turns into a tank or something. I don't know what that show's about at all. I, I think that was know. a different one. Or am I thinking? Oh. Of, I'm thinking of Mockton and Panzer. Uh, I don't remember. There's multiple. Da- I don't know. This one. This one was like a school, and they they all found like their school was on an aircraft carrier, but there was tanks hidden on the aircraft carrier. Uh, oh, <laughs> that's exactly where I'd put my tanks for sure. It was Always. like hidden. And they're like, oh, we found the French Renault. Da, 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 on deck 47 and they just showed like it was covered in like leaves and stuff I mean, <laughs> what a that's, fucking carrier that's, that's obviously where they're going to be the most effective oh like, yeah the whole the top of the, the whole top of the aircraft carrier was all grass and oh, it was man. like somehow like 20 times the size of a natural aircraft carrier which is already huge but it's like just insanely huge yeah that's that's that sounds like anime all right yep. i'm just imagining like they're in this like not what do you call it like almost like a steam room type thing like this big room where they have all the engine engine room there we go hey uh but like this giant engine room they're just working on stuff and they're like hey do you remember that bush being there i feel like it was a little to the left uh, i don't know hey, let's go check it out yeah and then fucking walking behind <laughs> a giant fucking tank hiding behind whoa that's a blah, blah. I, I don't know that's just what i imagine oh, there's a there's a web comic that's like that except it's like the tanks themselves are, per, are anthropomorphic sort of in that oh, they, they they have like actual thoughts. Oh, wow, that's weird. Okay. Yeah. I, I mean, tanks are cool, but right. the hey. internet's a weird place. We know this. It is, and that is not even close to the weirdest thing. So yeah, I I'm gonna go ahead and let them have that one. Yep. Cool. Cool work, guys. How, how so, generous of you? Uh, I wouldn't go that far. I wouldn't go that far. I just wouldn't. <laughs> yeah cool um oh yeah i was playing fucking um total war shogun we got for free on steam for a while there oh boy uh, man i the tutorial made me feel like i was ready for that game i was i was just like oh this, this is gonna go great and then i hit like the advanced tutorial and i just i just fucking oh i sucked beefed i sucked it hard i beefed hard bro i <laughs> I love these games, but I am so bad at them. It's so bad. <laughs> it's I just I I don't know if I just don't understand the mechanics. Maybe I'm too aggressive. I don't know what it is, but I'm not a good one at these. Maybe I'll like have to I, sit sit down, sit you down, and take you through uh, a little a few classes. Yeah, that would be cool, man. Teach you how to I play. Mean, I mean, like, I know the tactics and stuff. Like, I do fine on, like, ground combat. It was really when we got to the castle that I just, I fucking blew it. And that's oh, yeah. probably more about learning the game's unique mechanics because I, yeah. I've played a couple RTSs back in the day with you. I haven't played much in a while. I've always been more of a turn-based tactical guy than a real-time, but... Eh, I don't know. But it's cool. It looks pretty good. I mean, I didn't realize how old it was until like I loaded in and the graphics were like what they are. Yeah. <laughs> and I didn't tell you that I play the one that's uh I play mostly medieval two or Rome Total War, mm-hmm. the first one. Those are like two thousand five and two thousand six they came out. <laughs> but you and know, I'm it like, doesn't sound old, but <laughs> it's fifteen it years old. <laughs> yeah. It's old. It's almost yeah. legally adult age. It's pretty crazy. <laughs> it's closer to when <laughs> before the Super Nintendo came out than it is to us now. God, oh fuck. Wow. <laughs> Man, <laughs> you you had to say now I just feel old. Like <laughs> My back yeah. hurts. I need to go lie down. Uh... How do you, you guys weren't even you guys weren't even born in the eighties. You don't even know. <laughs> oh, what you what eighty eight or something? Eighty six? Whatever. It's, suck a dick. <laughs> what are you gonna go around? Only eighties kids remember. Go fucking burn a fucking house. No, now. no, no. Jesus. We're the real nineties kids. I mean, to be fair. Yeah. To be fair, yes, yeah. Oh my god. Oh, to be fair. Kids. Like, I mean, I have a lot of memories from the '90s, and you know, it's funny how many things I realize now are like, like 2000 to 2003 that I always yeah. thought was like '90s. But I feel like the yeah. '90s vibe really spilled over hard into the 2000s. Like, it yeah, depends it was, on it was which like, it was like 2003, yeah. 2004 is when like the 2000s like really like hit their stride yeah. and became like. 
more of a separate entity. Yeah. Which I don't know if it's just me, but I don't I don't feel that change much anymore. It feels like that that's really slowed down. Yeah, I, maybe... it really doesn't feel like 2020 is that different from 2010, except for everybody having their TikTok. Oh God. <laughs> but I mean, 2010 Vine was big, right? Yeah, I was yeah. about to say we went through the whole Vine thing, and yeah. it's just it's just a shitty rehash of it. I I mean, TikTok like... is nowhere near as good as Vine. Not because at all. The... Because yeah, literally I'll all agree. TikTok is, okay, this person did this one song. Now we're all going to now do our own version. Every of single thing. fucking person. Yeah, it's, I've talked about this so much. I feel like it just, it really stifles any kind of creativity just to, to be, I mean, there's still some there. Now, but it's, I, I, I enjoy it. it. Some, some, it encourages a lot of the cosplayers. Now, I do give them a lot of credit because it gives them something to do with their cosplays rather than just. I 100% back you on that and that is actually how i found out about tiktok was because of cosplayers because as you know i am a huge fan of cosplayers. showing up and doing whatever huge. okay mm. but huge huge <laughs> but you know it's really easy like after like three good cosplay videos you start seeing like everybody and their mother trying to do the same thing and it just being like uh, you, you just did the same thing as the last 10 people you just have a different face and body i guess all right mm. cool Oh, you're a little taller and a little skinnier. Yeah, where with the cosplayers, they're they're playing a character. They're actually playing that character they're cosplaying as, and it. I think that adds another layer to it. That yeah, you can a get a good you can get a good feel for personality based upon what they do with it. Yeah. Yeah. It was cool. Oh. Well, fellas, oh. I believe I am out of topics. Um, it has been a little over an hour. I think this would might might edge out to be our longest podcast yet by like a, a minute but yeah, it's pretty good uh anything anyone wanted to plug or you know anything to talk about before we go i think we're good i'm going to do a live uh jeremy smack cam i'm Ooh. just going to show up at his cat his house and just smack him and then i'm gonna leave oh yeah dude keep us posted i i definitely don't want to miss that yeah 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 well like, uh, you, you you can keep me posted too you know, like, like oh, ten, no. ten, 10 minutes in advance would be. Oh you know. no, Jer it's gonna be a surprise, baby. No, Jeremy, we're gonna tell you, and you're still gonna sleep through it. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, I probably will. <laughs> oh shit! Oh damn! I have to have an alarm clock, hmm. and my my alarm clock is a phone call. No, your yeah. alarm clock's gonna be five fingers to the face. Oh. Wow. <laughs> Just the fingers, no palm. Oh, I know. I gotta get that maximum whip with the fingers. Whip, whoosh, Hell to yeah. break the sound barrier with that shit. Get them. <laughs> Beautiful. Oh, well, I'm looking forward to that for sure. Um, there we go. Definitely, definitely want that. You know, I thought honestly, I thought Sean from Mega 64 hit peak stream with him cleaning an old refrigerator, but I think I think you're gonna top him with that one. I think you're gonna get it. It's a pretty good. That's a pretty good stream. Yeah. Oh, it's great. Yeah. <laughs> what about you, Jeremy? Anything you got to plug? Well, um, we're hoping to do another stream with the band and find a, a better location. We're we're thinking about maybe doing like some sort of kind of cover show where it's going to be like kind of you know think like Tony Hawk Pro Skater like punk rock kind of music and then at a skate park okay, considering that kind of idea well, um there's one requirement i have for this to go well you need to just cover the entire first game soundtrack and we're solid we're solid i i, I think i think pretty much the entire band would be okay with that so <laughs> i'd hope so oh that that's kind of like the the uh the genre that that they work in so that's not uh, that's not too far off base yeah fair enough fair enough that's um uh, i gotta say though it's it's crazy how many people tony hawks like inspired like that either skate or don't skate just the the music that the game brought together or even just the gameplay of it and it's it's amazing what this this man has done it really is yeah off the post, oh, yeah. I have I have an article as an oral history of that whole thing. I'll have to post that later. Hell but, yeah, yeah. So I'm down with that. 
Yep. Cool. Uh, and what was the band's name? I don't think you said it yet, Jeremy. Actually. Oh yeah, you're uh, you're right. I I don't know how I didn't <laughs> say that like right off the bat. Yeah, I work with Moonlight Drive-In. They are from right here in Daytona Beach, and um, the uh, we are working on an EP that's going to be coming out soon. Uh, with the album to follow, hopefully sometime within the next couple months, by the end of the year at the latest, hopefully sooner than that. We're kind of shooting for like a end of the summer kind of release, but uh, that's coming very quickly, and there's still a couple things we got to put in place, plus, you know, the mixing time and all that. So um, for sure should be by the end of the year. The EP is pretty much done, and it's just a matter of, uh, mastering for putting the songs together and that should be and then getting the actual uh, EP put onto something we're actually talking about doing instead of doing like CDs we we're okay. trying to find something that's like uh, you know everyone likes to have something physical and tangible that's like the big thing when you go to a concert you see a band that you like you want to be able to take something home and not everybody has access to like vinyl press and being yeah. able to do that kind of thing not everyone buys CDs, and when you do get CDs, a lot of times when it's like a DIY type thing, it's just a blank CD Ugh. look in a clear plastic case, if it's even in a case, if it's not in like a piece of paper or something like that. Oh, God. So, yeah, we've all seen those kind of things. So yeah. our goal is to, uh, we're, we're thinking about doing like little uh, USB flash drives, and we're trying to make it more inclusive. It's going to be like a flash drive that is like, themed and skinned to be you know like a we've got one idea for like a old cassette kind of flash drive uh there's one where it's like it's a vip pass and you know can not only be sold as like a ticket to a concert but also you know it will put the ep on it and if you bought the the flash drive versus just buying it digitally you know then you get a discounted rate again the album trying to do something like that's that where cool. it's it's kind of ties together and it it kind of gives not only can we be like oh you've we, you were here for those shows where we sold that particular version of it we can kind of keep track of who's coming who's you know actually been sticking around but also kind oh, of link it cool. into like a patreon and stuff like that to slowly tie it together into more of a brand yeah i mean that's cool I don't, I don't know how much of that we needed to hear until it was ready, but that, I like the ideas for sure. Um, reminds me a lot of um, Project Revolution that Linkin Park did where they sold the wristbands and all that. Or no, you got the free wristband from going somewhere or whatever, and you could download the uh, recording from the show you went to and put it on the wristband or something like that. That's like That 20, was uh, the Linkin Park ago. Underground, wasn't it? Uh, it, ha it wasn't really connected to Underground super no. much no it was uh it was project revolution when we um oh god that was so many years ago it was the first time i saw them um i remember i think you could just get the download for free just for being there was the promotion but then they had this thing where maybe it was part of underground i don't know because I, I never paid for underground because that's money I, I don't ever have at that time i was still a kid yeah working job you know but it was cool i remember liking that whole deal um that's cool man i'm looking forward to it though but you guys great plugs i think i have the winning plug of tonight though i just want to give a quick awesome shout out to um arizona green tea with ginseng and honey for keeping me hydrated throughout this podcast thank you so much uh the flavor 10 out of 10 every time uh, don't get them at 7-eleven because they charge more than a dollar it's a fucking scam it's a scam Thanks it is Th thank you arizona uh podcast goals are to maybe one day be sponsored by you but whatever hey um, hey i love their arnold palmers man so yeah oh yeah, another another awesome a arizona popular one over my house too i don't think i've ever had an arizona i didn't like to be honest with you can't think yeah, of one i can't think of one either no yeah even, the, yeah. even their diet green tea fantastic it, it's it's usually okay at worst yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah exactly all right yeah cool guys well this has been a lot of fun as always this has definitely <laughs> been our longest podcast so good work guys i really like appreciate a 10 minute that. outro but yeah yeah well yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah but uh yeah cool well thanks for listening everyone all two of you um 
Thanks, mom. I know you're the one out there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, yo, yo, shout out to mom. Yo, day after Mother's Day. Yo, you the best mom, man. Yo, for real. Yo, though. you the you the real MVP. Yeah, the mom VP. Let's give her yep. a shout out. Woo! All right, guys. Well, I'm I'm gonna go ahead and say that's that's it, man. Have a good night. Good night. <laughs> that's not by you, asshole. What the hell? <laughs> Bye. 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 You like paint? Paint?